Sorry about that, that blew your ears out. <laughs> so now we're at Forward House to really sort of push things through even more. Okay. <laughs> Let's find some. So quite rightly, wants a couple of folk who you haven't spoken to. Exactly. That have used Thurwood House because the more human interest yeah. I can get, the more yeah. I can get yeah. that difference. Fair enough. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Here we go. We got our first volunteer over here. Fantastic. Hello there. Hi. And you are? Uh, my name's Liz Sylvester. Okay, Liz. Now tell us tell us your story of Thurwood House. Uh, my mum lives with me and she's housebound, um, but before she moved in with us, she had a couple of falls in her own house, um, needed hospital visits a couple of times, um, but then came to Forward House afterwards for that kind of halfway between hospital and moving back home, giving her some re rehabilitation with physiotherapy and so on. Just things that, I mean, it, she would have been bed blocking if she, you know, she would have been left bed blocking if she hadn't been able to come here. And I think that's the point that people don't understand is that if, unless there is a respite uh, position like this, people are saying that hospital beds will be uh, continue to keep being filled yeah. with people who have been in hospital. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly it. Or facilities like this will be privatised and it'll end up costing us loads more than it costs us in tax already, which really, really worries me. Um, and I just, and it's an amazing facility. There's physiotherapy. She wasn't able to walk and I think she would have been either left at home unable to move around or left languishing in hospital. Yeah, yes, exactly. So has this really sort of affected your life and, and uh, really helped your family? Yeah, definitely. I mean, at the time, we wouldn't have been able to help her the way that they helped her. Um, and I, I work full time, so I wouldn't have been able to do so much either. Um, so it's just been amazing. Yeah, so it really helps carers as well as the dementia sufferers, I think. That's the point, isn't it? Brilliant. Is there anything else you'd like to say? No, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next, anyone else? <laughs> oh, here we are. I run a small business. Okay, you run... My clients have come through here. Okay, explain, yeah. Um, well, it's just a small local um, PA services company um, and home helps, really. And we've had a lot of clients who have come through either Furwood House or Milton Grange. Who need your help in your services? Well, yes, yes. They... The, a lot of them have either been in hospital, they come to one of the two facilities for respite and then they are able to go back into their own home and we can help them again. Well that's a good point as well because of course once they're back in their own environment they need to be able to look after, look after themselves. Absolutely, yes, yes. Well yeah, well let's hope that, uh, that the protests are, will work and move forward. Hopefully. Brilliant, well oh, thank you very much for your time. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Next, I'm oh, fantastic. Hello there, hi, who are you then? My name is Becky and I'm the local Parkinson's specialist nurse. Oh right, okay, so you come from the technical side of things here. I do. Right, so what's your story? Um, I actually use Forward House and on a weekly basis, I hold a clinic here, and I um, arrange for patients to go into Milton Grange and um, Forward so that they don't actually end up in hospital. Right, okay, so they come here, what, before they go into hospitals? I can arrange patients who actually need rehab who don't need a hospital bed to be admitted straight into these units so that they can actually avoid a hospital admission, get the rehabilitation that they need and return home as soon as possible. Okay, so how many beds are there in Furwood House? A good question. <laughs> good question. I actually wouldn't know. Many beds in Furwood. Yeah, okay. Exactly over twenty beds in, uh, Fur in, in Furwood. Yes. Okay, so over twenty beds, and I think that's what the, uh, the the image that's been uh, sorry the story that's been coming across quite a lot today is about um, not bed blocking. So, in other words, saving twenty beds from being blocked in hospitals. Is that right? Did you, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Have you got any experience of that? I used to be with the ward sister of the rehabilitation unit. Um, so yes. <laughs> so yes, absolutely. Okay, so I mean, is there a story you could tell everybody that's watching at the moment? Yeah, I had a lady who's recently went into Furwood House um, last Monday. She had been at home having injured her back. She'd been in bed for a week. Because we had the opportunity of getting her into Furwood House, it meant she did not have to have a hospital admission. The lady was actually so poorly um, from a mobility point of view that she was crawling around on the floor. And she's now, when I went in to see her four days later, walking. Right, so fantastic. So really, yeah, and yet another story of how Forward House and Grange also really help the community across, across Eastbourne and beyond. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. So really, I think we're sort of uh, being tied up here. And let's try and find out. Let's get, let's get, we're live, Councillor. Okay, <laughs> this, it, this is, oh, well, you introduce yourself. Uh, Councillor Jim Murray, uh, Ward Councillor for Hamden Park. Okay, fantastic. And, and we are in Hamden Park at the moment. Yes, so Furwood House is uh, one of our houses in, in my ward. Mm -hmm. um, very important asset to the town and uh, we're really fighting hard. I'm so pleased with the amount of people that have turned out, you know, because normally if you organise one of these events, you might get sort of 10 or 20 people turn out, even if it's something important. So the fact that we've had 100, 200 people turn out to this means that everybody in the town is really concerned and we should be doing something about this. Yes. Sorry. That's, that's fine. <laughs> All right. But I've been, we've been speaking to lots of people today and they're saying how crucial this is to try and keep, you know, the, the, the sort of dementia care and the respite care um, around because this, these are the only two facilities in Eastbourne. Is that correct? It is correct, yeah. My wife works in the uh, NHS in uh, Eastbourne. Um, she's on admin, but she's, she sees a lot of what ha happens if there aren't enough beds in, in the hospital. The reason why we don't get enough beds is because of bed blocking. These buildings, these houses, uh, help out with that bed blocking problem because people who don't have anywhere to go, to, anyone at home for them to go to, they come here, they get some respite care. They, 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 it's a sort of halfway house between here and actually going home full time. If we don't have these, then these, these people will have to stay at the hospital. They don't get the proper full care that they need at the hospital, but not through any fault of the NHS, uh, but just the fact that they, they, they don't have the specialist care there. Um, so therefore the beds end up being blocked for even longer and longer. So the, we, we end up with a problem which just re recurring and recurring and recurring. It, it, this is, 
this is the opposite of firefighting. This is actually sort of so trying to solve the problem before the problem occurs. And what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with uh, no beds that we can send these people to, and it's just going to back up, and the system's going to end up failing. Yeah, and fewer beds in the hospital available for really acute um, uh, uh, cases, I guess. Yeah, more and more people stacking up in the corridors. No, which is not good. No. No, well, thank you very much. Oh, unless you have something else to say. No, no, no that's fine. Thank okay, you. <laughs> thank you very much. So, if we, as we go around. Yes. Yes, we are live. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Oh, all right. Okay. okay. Thanks for asking. Move to south, yeah. No, no. Oh, no, no. No, no. What's your channel? Uh, your councillor online. Oh, councillor online. All right. Yeah, you remember right. us from the other day. Okay, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, I know that. No, but we're, I mean, this is councillor online. Yes. But I thought um, because we wanted to see the news, I wanted to tell our friends that you're building the news. Oh, okay. So they would support us. Because they're going to take us. Oh, right. Thank you. I'll see you later. All right. Now, I wanted to talk to you too. Please do. Because I think you two possibly have a story or two to tell us about about <laughs> about here and, and the help that it, uh, that it offers. Well, absolutely. M my daughter-in-law used to work here. She's a physiotherapist, and it's an amazing rehabilitation area. Yeah. Stroke rehab is a very, very underfunded service, and if we lose this, we are going to lose an incredible um, service that people need. Who knows when we're going to have a stroke? I had a, a dear friend who was on the council, and he had a stroke at a very young age, and he came into Forward House, and that's the only proper care and rehab that he got. Right. He still struggles with his speech. If we don't have that, then are people going to not have any sort of backup, backup at all? And it's it's just an abomination to even consider shutting something like this. Right, because it's it's, it's not only the respite care that's offered in, no. in the area, it, oh, no. it's the rehab as well, isn't it? This, this place is respite and rehab, mm. and they have specially trained rehabilitation phys physios. You know, if you shut this, this is going to be a knock-on effect. It's a no-brainer. These people are going to be languishing in hospital and not having nowhere to go and no sort of um, plan, plan of action after their stroke or after their hips and, and, um, and other sort of problems. Exactly. It's going to cost us so much more in the long run. So to me, it seems to me that the, um, the county council are just washing their hands of it so that they can get another budget sorted. Now, we need to make sure that this doesn't end up having to be on the NHS budget. You know, that's all they care about, the fact that they're, they're, it's not going to be their money. Right. But actually, it's, a country is, is looked at by how we treat our vulnerable folk. And yeah, we're not true. doing a very good job at the moment. Thank you for that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is someone to follow, isn't it? It has to be said. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So, what, and your, what's your story? Um, well, I, I'm actually, this is in my ward. I'm a local councillor. I'm also mayor at the moment. Um, but... Well, in fact... What well, introduce I'm, yourself uh, yes, properly. Yes, uh, yes, sorry, yes. Your Highness. Is it Your Highness? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Your Honour? No, I don't it's know. It's actually Madam Mayor. <laughs> Madam Mayor, thank you very much for the education. No, no, it's, uh, no I didn't. I, I'm not here as that. I'm here as local ward councillor, and I don't live far. But whatever, what Carolyn said, and it's important too, that the, the money side of it is important. First of all, I think they're going to try and... Um, put it onto the hospital mm. and the hospitals have enough to cope with yes. and what is going to happen to the people that would normally can be able to come out of hospital because of the we offer this care again the hospital is going to suffer what I expect everyone's been saying this it's the I was at uh, the DGH the other night for uh, it was uh, some equipment you know that was, that was being opened and this is what they were saying you know that what's going to happen to the people they'll be staying in hospital right. and we've already got that big problem yes exactly so this is it, it's no it's a no-brainer yeah. it's a terrible thing to be closing and they won't save any money apart from if they leave it let it go private well the, i think that this is what a lot of people that yeah. we've been speaking to have been saying well yeah. thank you very much madam mayor <laughs> we'll speak okay. to you again. Thank you. I'm here. The reason I say it, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll just have a. Sorry. Yeah. Should we go offline for a minute? Yep. Yeah.